Hello, my name is Jim Cooper, and I'm president of Kioware. Thank you for attending our first session, introducing our new Kioware server product. You may ask, first session? How many sessions will there be? Well, the reality is that our new Kioware server is a complete rewrite, and there are many new features I want to show you, and it will take more than one session. This session, I want to focus on our user interface. And there's three primary goals uh, in redesigning our user interface. First, we wanted to make sure that when you first log on at that highest level, there's as much useful information as possible. Secondly, when you need to drill in for more detail, we want that to happen as quickly as possible, which is really saying minimize mouse clicks. And then thirdly, well, our current Kiowar server architecture is probably 15 years old. The user interface is probably 10 years old. And back then, when you were interacting with Kiowar server, you were using your desktop computer or a laptop. Well, now you also use those two, but you also use a tablet and even a cell phone. So our third goal is to make sure that the new Kiowar server is fully responsive and as functional on a cell phone as it is on a desktop. And with that, I think you're sick of looking at me. Let's get on with the demo. Okay, this is the screen you see when you log in. Now, I didn't show you the login page, but it will let you either use your key or server account, or you can use single sign-on using your Google or Microsoft account. We also support two-factor authentication. And you may also be confused by this KeoCloud logo up here. And you're thinking, well, what in the world is KeoCloud? Well, so you can either purchase a key or server license and install it within your infrastructure, or even up in the cloud if you wish, or you can use our KeoCloud product. KeoCloud is our installing Kiowa server in the cloud and then providing uh, annual subscription licenses for you to access it. Functionally, they're the same. And throughout my sessions, I may interchange KeoCloud and Kiowa server, just what appears to be randomly. Functionally, they are the same. So I don't want to confuse you. Okay. So this is the screen you first see when you log in. What jumps out at you? Well, at the top, there's a red banner saying that we have a uh, kiosk in error status. And so you can click up here if you wish to see what they are. What else jumps out at you? Well, over on the right is our dashboard of widgets. And the first widget being displayed is our device status widget. And, you know, right, right jumps out at you is that we have 33 kiosks that are in good status. We have one in an error and, and three that are in an error status. And if I were to click here, I would load the same report that I would click or that I'd view if I clicked up here. But I can, you know, I can click here and you can see the 33 casts that are currently happy. Let's scroll down to the next widget. This is a device uptime widget. And so this is showing the, the cumulative device uptime of all of the kiosks that are here at the top site level. And it does it in over a 24 hour period. The first band is one hour, four hours, eight, 12 and 24. And you can see that regardless of the band, our uptime is abysmal. And if this were an actual production site, boy, this would be Panic City trying to figure out why that is. In fact, I'm actually showing you our beta uh, Keo Cloud site, and we have only kiosks testing, you know, testing kiosks accessing um, the site. And at the moment, they're not uh, that many actually talking, so therefore uptime is low. So nothing to worry about. The next widget is our locations. So because Kiowa is able to upload that launch of the kiosk up to Kiowa server, we can plot it on a map. And not only do we plot it, we plot this, the showing you this, the status of the kiosk. Uh, you know, so green is happy, yellow is warning, red is an error. And for instance, if I cared about this one, I could click on it and immediately just drill into the kiosk detail page. So it's really easy to navigate around. The next widget uh, shows the top five pages. So if you care about which pages are the most popular for your kiosk users, and again, this is all the users over all the kiosks uh, at the top level, this shows it and it shows it over the last seven days. So you can cycle back through through the days uh, if, you, if you wanted to see different data. And the last widget is um, the, our top five kiosks. So which kiosks are most heavily used based on user sessions? And again, this is over seven days and you can change the time period if you wish. So for instance, 
this top kiosk, uh, let's see, it's uh, UT53P. Now I happen to know that P is Pennsylvania, but that it's unit 30443. So remember the 443, because that'll be useful later. So let's pretend that this kiosk is the one we care about learning more about. Now I could just click on it right now and immediately go into the, de the kiosk detail page, but that's no fun. Let's see what other ways we can get there. And for that, let's scoot over here to the left side of the screen, which is the organizational hierarchy of this site. And you can see that at the very top level, I have three groups, one's function, geographic, and then the build test group. And tell you what, I'm gonna drill into function. And you can see that uh, there are subgroups for human resources, retail, and warehouse. So essentially these are groups that you stuff kiosks into based on what the kiosk does. Let's go back to the default site, to the site level, and go into geographic. And tell you what, I'm gonna go into row view just because it's a little bit cleaner when we get a lot of groups. So geographically, we've we've uh, our subgroups are uh, the U.S. is broken into Central, Eastern, and Western, and then we also have an England subgroup because we have an office in, in England. Now, so I know that that kiosk was in, in Pennsylvania because of the P. Uh, so Pennsylvania is in the Eastern U.S. And oh, geez, look, there's more subgroups, so I could keep clicking in. You know, Pennsylvania is in the Mid Atlantic, so yeah, I'd eventually get there. But what's a What's a quicker way to get to the Pennsylvania group? So I can go up here and go search and I can search everything, just kiosks, just groups, just reports, uh, or just journal entries. I'm gonna search everything and I'm gonna search for Pennsylvania. And so it found a Pennsylvania group. It also found a journal entry that had Pennsylvania in it. But let's go into the, uh, the Pennsylvania group. Okay, well now Pennsylvania is broken down into uh, subgroups as well. And uh, so which one has the 443 in it? Well, I could drill into each one of these and find. Uh, the only one we can rule out is Western PA because hey, it doesn't have any kiosks in it. But tell you what, let's search again. So I'm gonna search on 443. And hey, there it is. So this is the detail page for the kiosk unit 30443. And it's a very, well, it's a detail page. There's a lot of detail here. I am not going to go into that now. In fact, the second session is devoted entirely to working through all the information that's on this screen. But what I wanna show you uh, right now is uh, across the top, our uh, dashboard of widgets is now horizontal. And in addition, there's an addition, there's a there's a new one uh, called the session count widget, and so that is showing um, the total number of user sessions over the last seven days. Go down to one day is 36, and you know you can cycle through. The other thing I want to talk about is the associated groups. So down here, and you'll see that this kiosk is in Eastern PA. So yeah, now we know where, where uh, in ter terms of the geographical group it lives, but it's also in the HR group. And it's important to, to, to realize that a kiosk can live in more than one group. For instance, if this kiosk not only did HR, but was also doing warehouse functions, well, we could add that group by clicking this plus button and just add warehouse group as well. And it's really easy to manage your groups. For instance, if we didn't, so say it became a warehouse group and stopped doing HR, well, we could remove HR just by clicking the minus button. Uh, in addition, it's also useful. Uh, so for instance, Eastern PA, we know it's an Eastern PA, but how do you get to Eastern PA? It may not be obvious. Well, if you click this uh, link, You'll get a pop-up that shows, well, this is the path. Starting at the top, you go geographic group, Eastern US, Mid-Atlantic, Pennsylvania, and then into Eastern PA. So it's really easy to manage your uh, associated groups. And, and it may beg the question, well, why have, so why have more than one group? And the answer is 
purely from a management function. It provides management flexibility. And uh, I'll tell you what, let me give you an example. I'm going to drill into HR. And so HR has, what, seven kiosks in it. They're all happy. Uh, well, actually, let's scroll down and see what it's, their uptime is. Yeah. I'm going to call that a win. It's better than <laughs> than all of them were. Um, and you'll see that our kiosk 443 is, is included in this. But we can go up and run reports now. And so the reports would be on all the kiosks that are in the HR group. And that 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 can provide very useful information. So let's go back to the uh, to the kiosk again and drill into Eastern PA. And so there's our three our four four three kiosk. And, and again, we can go in and look at reports. And so this would be just Eastern PA reports data that's being used in the report so it's just really easy to manage kiosks if you arrange your uh, grouping um, in, in, in a logical manner all right so that is that what else do i want to show you i want to um, talk about how cure server can be viewed on a cell phone so I'll tell you what let me get out of full screen mode here And shrink it down. So you can see that as I, as I narrowed the width down to a, a cell phone size, that the dashboard took over uh, because it shrunk down, and that's all that fit. So you can then hide the dashboard, and now you're in the on the organizational side of, of the console. And uh, tell you what, let's do a search. There it is. And there's only room for one widget at a time, but you can cycle through them as you wish. And then it's just a matter of scrolling down through all. there's associated groups and reports and all the other things that I'm going to go over in the next session. The key is that Kiowa server is now as usable on a cell phone as it is on a desktop. And with that, I think my time is done for this session. I look forward to you to uh, or to you seeing the second session in which I'll go over um, this detailed kiosk information. I look forward to that. I hope this has been a useful time spent for you. Take care and goodbye.